Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to B and K Bees. Today is Tuesday. I don't know. It's the middle of June, something like that. And uh, we are out in one of our honey yards, adding boxes and classifying for June splits. So essentially, we're trying to figure out which colonies need more honey space and give me a good indication of which ones I can put formic acid on next week uh, by placing the rock in either the front, middle, or back of the hive after we're done inspecting. So let's get started. We've got a ton of hives to go through today. Okay, so the first two that I had gone through had very heavy honey frames. Probably should have added another box a week ago. This one looks like they're just getting started on these three frames, um, but I'm still gonna add another box because it is flowing, it is coming in. And there's a lot of bees in these boxes. So as you can see, they are... They're filling out the majority of that box so those frames can get filled really, really quickly when the colony looks like that. So I'm gonna add another box, put a forward rock on, and be prepared to give them a full dose of formic next week. I don't know, there's more in between you and the truck from those nukes. <clears throat> okay, so you may have seen me under super there. Um, under supering is not necessary. And by under supering, I mean putting the fresh empty super underneath the active ones, the ones that they're adding honey to, it's totally not necessary. Um, I do think that it's advantageous if you're running single brood chambers because when the nectar starts flowing hard, when it comes in from a big nectar source, like say in the middle of summer from the basswood trees, they bring it in so fast that they need a place to put it. Like they're gonna immediately bring it in the bottom door and pass it off to some sisters. And those sisters are gonna try to deal with it very quickly. And giving them space right directly above the brood area to be able to place that is advantageous if your goal is trying to keep the brood area free of nectar and honey. So with doubles, it's not that big of a deal because they've got a considerable amount more space to play around with in that brood area. But with singles in the middle of summer, I just always think that it's a better idea to throw those empty frames underneath and right directly above that queen excluder just to continue to give those bees the idea that they have the space to move into, they have the extra space to move stuff around so that they don't have to make that brood area cramped at all. Another sort of... Not great looking one. <clears throat> the ones that look great, I can see that fresh white wax from the uh, hole in the inner cover. That one and this one don't have that, although there are bees up here working on some frames. that all right I'm not going to I mean they look good on the bottom just a very little bit stored in the uh, in the honey box I don't want to give them too much 
So I am going to leave them as is and put a forward rock on. I'll be out in a week or two and they will be jam packed. All right, so where did you stop, Katie? Is this, is this pallet done? No, I've got the two on the, my right that need to be done. So how are you doing? You didn't do that whole pallet? Yeah. I'm going to start leaning on the side of no extra honey super since we're almost done. We don't have that many left. Okay. Alright, decent amount going on here. heavy got a whole lot going on on this side of this box I'm gonna check her a frame or two okay mm -hmm. Katie I need that smoke too mm -hmm. yeah I know it's right there Looking a little brood area there. Largely free of honey, which is good. That's the goal. That's what I'm looking for this time of year. If I'm getting into the brood area at all, I want to be paying attention to are they able to successfully keep the brood area free of nectar? And this is, yeah, I mean, definitely. We're doing a good job of it in this hive. Eggs. Wow, I picked crappy hives to go through on the uh, on the camera. I went through good ones, mm -hmm. then turn the camera on and get crap. 
All right, well, not a whole lot even going on. They must have swarmed on me. Just wonderful. Just freaking wonderful. I don't have a rock for this hive. How are we a rock short over here, too? That one did not have one, you're right. So this one was doing well, and well enough at split time to have added two boxes. Probably should start doing that as a general rule. Here's some should definitely start adding after splits two boxes as a general rule. Give us a little bit longer leash. All right, this one's heavy. These frames are getting fat. Very heavy. Packed in the brood area. And give them another one, give them a forward drop. So this is what I'm talking about. <clears throat> as far as seeing activity that indicates nectar coming in and that these bees are storing nectar in the super is that white, white wax. <clears throat> That's a good indication, a good sign before we even get into the part of the colony. down yeah that's what I was hoping to see a lot more of on this video no, just heavy. heavy honey boxes in June we've only got one honey box left all right so what does that mean with these three and yep. this? Yep. Well, I definitely have to add one to this one, so we're gonna be short. Yo. Heavy, heavy. Sure. Going to need one for sure? Yeah. Okay. Well, we can just top super those ones. Just figure out which ones need them. We'll drive back out here, throw them on real quick, and then go to the next yard. Yeah? Yeah. Can I get you to take one step to the right? Oh, my back felt so good.
All right, so that's it. As you could hear, uh, Katie and I saying, we are out of honey boxes, so we have to go grab some more. The issue is we were having a garage installed at the house and there were some cinder blocks and some old metal and stuff sitting on the garage pad. So we loaded the trailer with a bunch of junk. I had to come out here without the trailer. So yeah, gotta go get honey boxes, add those to those, to those last couple of colonies over there. And then we're on to another yard to do more of the same. Um, but yeah, cool. I am happy for the most part with how things looked out here. Uh, just a lot of stuff. As you sort of probably heard me say, uh, sort of, kind of pondering that it would be a good idea for me to be adding two boxes right away after spring splits. And it would have definitely been a good idea this year, um, just because of the fact that everything happens so quickly. Normally after spring splits, I have a little bit of time before the nectar starts flowing, a little bit of time to get things classified and treated and dealt with in a better manner. Um, but this was, spring splits, spring splits, spring splits. And that took with the trips downstate and the, and the hanging out with family when we were down there, took a whole month. So rather than having been out here, you know, two weeks after those splits, the way I would have liked, it's been a month. And so we lost a couple swarms, but we also see a bunch of heavy honey boxes. So we're definitely going to be extracting on schedule here in the next uh, probably two weeks. But yeah, a couple boxes were a little bit thinner than I would have liked to have seen, but nothing is ever exactly as I want it to be. Uh, beekeeping it just has too many variables and these bees refuse to read the same books as I do. So I don't know what the hell to do. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy this video, click like, comment down below. If you're not subscribed, what are you even doing? Subscribe. Thanks for watching. Get out there and have some fun with your bees. See ya.